good day everyone uh, just a little different format for today's study um, if you're those of us who follow our Wednesday nights and I hope you have been enjoying the Wednesday night videos um, last night was Wednesday this is Thursday morning actually um, but uh, last night we kind of took things a little different route and it was not the, the route we went was not conducive to video um, our Wednesday nights are more, again, for the series we've been going through this last year, going deeper. And so a lot of it involves a lot of great teaching, um, great discussion. But at the same time, I also want to encourage and develop our people and not just pure teaching all the time. And so last night we, we broke up into different little groups and we allowed them to, to lead their own group discussion and to go forth from there and uh, a lot more private, a lot more small group, so that there's greater discussion, greater opportunity for prayer. And uh, so that's what we did last night. And so with the different groups that we had going on, there's no way to record it. So for those of us who, who enjoy the online format, or, or even uh, via the church app, you get this. And so enjoy it. I hope it's rewarding to you, and uh, I hope you really glean a lot from it. For the last several weeks, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We looked at the Holy Spirit. Um, we saw how, how he has a personhood. We saw um, how he has personal attributes, that he is separate and distinct from the Father and the Son. Um, we, the following after that, we looked at how he operated in the, in, the, in the lives of the Old Testament and what he was doing during that time. And then we looked at the, the New Testament and, the, and the, the believers in the church and how the Holy Spirit is active in the life of Christ and in our lives. And it was really, really rewarding to go through that. And then the following week, we looked at uh, the, the gift of speaking in other tongues. We are a Pentecostal church. We are Assemblies of God. And one of our fundamental truths is that we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. And... Uh, it is very important, and if you look in the book of Acts, you see that that was a regular occurrence to all who uh, began to believe and uh, receive the gift. And so um, it's been really rewarding for our people, and I hope that if, if you're able to uh, get the audio and, and, and to follow online, I hope that that was equally as uh, beneficial for you, and I hope that you gleaned a lot from it. This last week, yesterday, we, we took an online Form. I mean, not online. Excuse me. <laughs> we we took a, a a small group breakup form, um, and really allowed them to develop. And their own discussion was based upon where we've been in the last several weeks. And so they were still very much focused on the Holy Spirit um, and where it goes from there. And so for you all, um, I have notes here at the church. If you come on Sunday morning, but you just miss Wednesday nights, I have copies of the notes on Wednesday night. If you come on Sunday morning and you want a copy of the notes, let me know. I will make. I will grab you a copy of the uh, the notes that we used this last week. Um, my notes are always available. Uh, if you come on a Sunday morning or something like that, or you know if you're able to come by the church. I will get make sure that you get a copy of my notes. Um, I don't hold the market on them. There's, they're not exclusive or anything like that. It's, it's my work that I've put together for your benefit. And uh, so I hope you, you get a lot from it. So last night we went through it um, and we, I broke up. I got three different Bible verses, three different verses in the book of Acts for them to read the passage read my thoughts on it, and then have some discussion based around some questions to kind of help guide them along. Um, you know, it wasn't a, a follow these steps. It was simply let me help you, um, let me help guide you so that you don't just read a passage and then just you're in the wind. Um, so the first verse that we looked at was Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. So again, that's Acts 2, verse 1 through 4. And we read this passage, and it's in this passage where we see the Holy Spirit being poured out on all the believers that were gathered together. Okay, it was an amazing moment. And, um, you know, you have to imagine, can you imagine being there in that moment when that occurs and seeing all this for the first time and being able to experience this mighty gift and this fulfillment of a promise that has been given generations, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years prior to that moment. Even in the prophet Joel, he spoke about this that God was going to pour out His Spirit on all people, and 
And so to be in that moment and to see it come would just be such a wonderful experience. And then, you know, as we read that verse, and then we asked some questions, you know, what are your thoughts on the passage? Okay. What are, what are, you know, what are your thoughts on this? You know, um, ponder it. Think about that. This is what the Bible means when it says meditate on the scriptures. It means when you read it, think about it, you know, uh, dwell on it. Let it occupy your mind. That's, that's what, and that's important. And so I want to ask that question, what are your thoughts when you read this passage? Because it's important, you know. And then I have some questions, you know, what, what are your thoughts? Um, what do you think about God keeping his promises? You know, I mean, that, that's an encouraging thing. I want you to think about that. When God keeps his promises, what does that mean to you? Um, and then, you know, follow that up. What, what promises, make it personal, what promises has God given and kept to you? What, what things has, has the Lord spoken to you and, and promises that, that you've made that you're able to receive and you see these kept promises in your life? Now, the reason that question is important is I want you to see and grasp how amazing it is that God cares about you and that he is one who keeps his promises. And when we see that, it increases our faith. And so uh, I hope that that's so beneficial for you. So we went from Acts chapter 2. And those questions and then we begin to look at Acts chapter 10 Acts 10 44 through 48 so Acts chapter 10 verses 44 through 48 in this second passage we see that it takes the Holy Spirit into the lives of some of the very first Gentiles the Gentiles with the non-Jews um, Peter the, 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 the disciple Peter the Apostle Peter is preaching the gospel in a in a in a Roman's house, he's talking to Cornelius and his, Cornelius' his whole household. And as he's given the, the message to them, in the middle of his preaching, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the whole household. And the whole household began speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, and they were just filled with the Holy Spirit. These are Gentiles, you know. This, the, the Jews, um, a lot of times, felt like they had held the market on God. They, they, it was them first, it was all for them and their benefit, and you know, they didn't think it was for anybody else. And so to have the Holy Spirit poured onto the Gentiles was a very big deal to them. Um, you know, it was amazing how that happened. And so it's so wonderful to see how God pours out this gift on all flesh, on all people who are willing, who desire it, who want it, who, who are following him. And, and they, they, they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord. And if they follow Christ and they want more and they're seeking God, God is willing and and. and if the people are willing and they want it, God will pour out this gift upon all people. It's not just for this exclusive group or that elite group. There, it's it's for everybody. And so it's so amazing that that this revelation comes at this moment uh, to Peter and and to the whole uh, Jewish community of believers that the Holy Spirit's for for everybody, you know. And so so dwell on that passage for a while, you know. Dwell on that as. As you see how, how great things that God has done, uh, even in that moment, um, and how amazing that is, that that gift is for everybody. Um, has there ever been a time when you felt like someone was or should be beyond God's blessing? See, unfortunately, we're still flesh. We still live in a fallen, fallen world. We still have our, our fleshly faults. And for a lot of times, we can be so bitter towards individuals or so uh, elite and superior in our thinking that sometimes we think of God's blessings, God's promises are, are uh, some people are uh, non-deserving or, or beyond that reach or they, they shouldn't deserve it at all. And, and sometimes we, we, we can do that to people or even our own, um, we don't wish it upon our own enemies. But uh, even in that place, you have to understand that the, the, the one who died for me, it's, it, you know, it's Easter or resurrection weekend. And the one who died for me and rose again for my life did so for them as well. You know, and we have to think that Christ died for my enemies just as much as he died for my friends. And that his promises for me and my group is the same promises for that group over here. And, um, you know, so we have to ask our question. Is there anybody that we ever think that way? Because, you know, to see that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon another group of people, that God's promises is just as much for them. Is, is so beautiful and wonderful, you know? Was there ever a time that you considered yourself beyond God's blessing? That you considered yourself beyond what God wants to do and that you were not deserving of God's promise, you know? 
Cornelius just wanted more, and he was seeking God, and he was the one who, who feared the Lord and prayed, and he sought God, and, and all of a sudden he received it. You know, there's there's stuff for us to receive from God, and it's and it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And if you humble yourself, if you repent, if you uh, uh, turn from your ways and turn back to the Lord and and seek His face and desire Him above all else, you're you're not beyond God's reach if you just do those things. And those promises are still available every single day. And uh, so it's important to be conscious. Think about those things, okay? Think about those questions. We went on further. We looked at Acts 2. We looked at Acts 10. And the third and final verse that we looked at that night was Acts 19. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Acts 19, 1 through 10. And in this last situation, we see the Holy Spirit being poured out. It comes upon a group of young people who are ministering. They're, they're, they're going out and ministering on the countryside and, and spreading the good news of Jesus and, and doing all these wonderful things. Um, they, they, they've experienced a baptism of repentance, or, or John's baptism, which basically means they were baptized in water and, and they repented and they, they knew about Jesus. And so they're doing all these great works and they're focusing, they're limiting themselves to these areas. And so they're, 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 they're one of those places. And then they encounter the Apostle Paul. And so here comes Paul onto the scene. They encounter him, and he asks them, in the modern English version of a modern English translation of the Bible, says, since you have believed, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they, they replied, we did not know there was a Holy Spirit. We did not know there's another baptism. And so Paul asked, and they were, some, they were willing, and he laid their, his hands upon them and prayed over them, and it says that they were all, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Okay? This is, this is amazing. They had no idea there was more. They had no idea that they, they had this one portion, and they did not know about the other, and they had no experience with the other. And so then they encountered this one who did speak in tongues. They encountered this one who was full of the Holy Spirit and with power, and, and they, they were doing the work. They were ministering. They were, they were spreading the gospel. It was really wonderful. It was really good, but there was something more for them. And then Paul came and he prayed over them and he laid his hands upon them and they, they received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and uh, just a wonderful occurrence. And so with all the other passages and just like this one, what are your thoughts on that? You know, what is, what do you think about this thing that, that, that there's more to this passage? You know, there's, there's something so great that when you see that there's something else that God has for you and it's, there's more for you to experience that is outlined within the Word of God. It's not just limited to this one area. That God wants to pour His Holy Spirit upon all who are willing and desire it, and that it's for everybody. And you can be an experienced minister and do a great work without it, but there's so much more that makes you much more efficient, much more um, capable. And uh, the whole idea of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, My Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost ends of the earth. That the whole idea that the Holy Spirit comes to empower you. This is what he was speaking to his followers, his, his believers, those who knew his name and knew his voice and knew his word. He was talking about another experience. The Holy Spirit was going to come upon them. How beautiful is that? You know, and that, that work is available for us. Uh, you know, for, for many of us um, who have been filled with the Holy Spirit and, and speaking in other tongues, what was that moment like for you? What was, it, what was that moment like when you first received the, the, the gift that the Holy Spirit brings into your life? And, you know, for a lot of, sometimes it's, it's a big evangelism service and there's a lot of music and um, uh, just a wonderful experience where there's a speaker and you were in a large group and it's just wonderful. But at the same time, for the same gift and the same reason, some people are doing dishes in the kitchen. Somebody might be driving on the, on, the, on the road and the Holy Spirit comes upon them in the car and they've got to pull over because well, they're, they're praying in the car and it's going to get wonderful. You know, these are amazing experiences for us. And dwell upon that. Remember that moment. You know, I was, I was a 14-year-old boy in a church on a Sunday night service. That's why Sunday nights are important to me, whether it's a prayer service or an evangelism service or just a standard Sunday night service. Sunday evenings are wonderful to me because that's where I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some people it may have been camp. They, get, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit at, at, at church camp, whether it was youth camp, kids camp, or family camp. 
And so for them, camp is a really great experience because that's what they receive the gift. And so they value that. And they, we want to create these opportunities where these are continuing for people to receive these gift, this gift. And so it's wonderful, you know, to think about those things. And then praise God for that gift and praise God for that moment that it occurred. And it was wonderful, okay? And then there's, there's many believers out there who still have not received this gift of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not justifying it, but I want you to understand something. It's, it's all right. But I want you to know there's more, and it's, it's possible to seek it, to desire it, to long for it. And, and that's important. And so, you know, would you be open to receiving this gift? It's, I mean, it is a gift. It's to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Acts 1.8, again, it's just, it's, it's emblazed upon my mind. And I want, I, I, my desire is that every follower of Christ would desire this gift. Um, and that's important for me. And so as, as we see these things, you know, to also recognize that um, I want you to desire it. And that, it starts from that place where you want the gift. You, you decide, I desire this gift. And you go from that place. And then you begin to seek it. You begin to ask God for it. Um, you know, study the passage in the Bible about it. Look at the prophets and how the Holy Spirit operated in them. Look at throughout the entire book of Acts and see what the Holy Spirit does through all of that. Um, you know, it's, it's beautiful when you see what the Holy Spirit does. Um, and, and it's really good. I, 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14 are, are two other great passages in the Bible that talk about the Holy Spirit and how he operates within the church. You know, so, so desire it. Study those things and begin to ask the Lord for it. Begin to pray for it. Begin to ask God to do something. And then if it takes you a while and you're still seeking the gift, um, you, you know, look, in Acts 19, it, Paul laid his hands on the believers. He, he placed his hands upon them. He prayed over them that they would receive the gift. And the gift was given. They had faith to receive it. He had faith to pray that it would come. And with them believing in the Lord, it, it came. And so maybe you've been seeking the gift for a while. Well, then ask other believers to pray with you, to lay their hands on you, and to, to go to before the throne of God together with you and allow that to, to take place. There's something beautiful in the body of Christ comes together and we all operate from that same place. And it's wonderful and it's beautiful. So that was our Wednesday night. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, you know, the other Wednesday night videos are about an hour long. This one's a fraction of that time. I hope that this was rewarding and beneficial to you. Um, I hope that you were able to take this video and, and the notes that I just transcribed for you um, and, and to have it in your home and to pray with your, uh, your children, your spouse, your friends, your neighbors. Um, and I hope you were able to glean from this. But uh, that's, that's the purpose of this, is that you take these videos, whether it's a Sunday morning or Wednesday night, and you take these videos and you allow them to impact you. You allow them to speak into your life and you allow the word of God to do its purpose, which is to, to just go before you and, and transform you. Um, that's the wonderful thing that we get to do in this place. And so I praise God for it. Um, and I hope that you are uh, encouraged by this. Not only encouraged, but I hope that you are challenged by this. I want, I want us to grow and to stretch ourselves and to, to continue to to mature and continue to be equipped in, in the work of the Lord. And so I hope that you are blessed. I'm going to close this in prayer, and then I will end this video. But I just want to thank, thank the Lord for you, for your dedication, for watching these things, and for being a part of uh, our church family and our extended church family via the online format. God bless you. May you have a great day. Let's pray, and then uh, you can go on to the next thing. Heavenly Father, we glorify you this day. We thank you for, the, for your word of truth. We thank you for the scriptures. We thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit came upon the lives of the writers and penned these mighty words. Lord, your word is perfect and wonderful. Father, I pray that as, as our people read your word, as they read the scriptures, that your truth would just be made evident to them, that it would just do a mighty work throughout their lives, and that you would just be glorified in their lives, Father, as they apply the word to their thinking, apply the word to their homes, and that you would just do a mighty, mighty work. Father, we lift up Albert Lee Assembly of God Church. We ask that you would bless this church, that you would continue to pour forth your Holy Spirit in every service and every time we gather, that we would draw near to you, that we would encounter you and your word, and that it would just transform our lives, our hearts, and our homes. 
And Lord, that through our homes being transformed, you would transform our communities and through our communities, our nation. Father, we give you the glory today for the things that you have done. We ask your blessing upon our people throughout their homes and those who are watching these videos online. Father, that you do a mighty, mighty work. We glorify you. We praise you. Lord, I pray for those who have been full of the Holy Spirit with speaking in other tongues. I pray that you would bless them, that they would praise you for this mighty gift. And for those who have not been filled with the Holy Spirit as of yet, Lord, I ask that through these videos and through these things that we have been doing and teaching and, and just experiencing here at this church, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon them who are seeking it and desiring it. And Lord, that no matter where they find themselves, as they praise you throughout the day, may they receive the gift in Jesus' name. Father, we love you and we praise you. And we ask that you go before your people in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you this week. Come join us either online or, uh, or in person Sunday morning. This is Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. We'll have the online format. It'll be wonderful. Join us uh, 10 a.m. for the morning celebration here at the church. Uh, the, it'll be online live at that same time. If you catch it in the app, look for it Tuesday morning. It'll be great. Thank you so much. If you are watching this on YouTube, <clears throat> click the like, subscribe. Don't miss what we're putting out. It'll be the best way to catch all that's going on. God bless you. Our Wednesday night videos um, are either uploaded Wednesday night or Thursday morning, just depending on my availability. I try to get them out to you as soon as we get them. God bless you. Have a wonderful time, and I'll see you later. Goodbye, and God bless.